evening. We managed to sleep through most of the of the night. Un that third night, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. And so the next morning, what did we um, find at the gifting bowls? And the next morning, we went out to the gifting bowls, and on the one on the left, they had taken um, everything in the bowl except for two Twinkies, but one of our rolls that we had spread with peanut butter was moved outside of the gifting bowl and was let, sitting with the peanut butter side face up right beside the bowl. And it looked like, upon inspection, that something had run a finger across the top of the peanut butter. So this was this was yes. an open face kind Finger of sandwich. Finger scooped it, right, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Something had run something across a piece, a part of that peanut butter on top of that. But it wasn't put back in the bowl, and, and it wasn't taken. It was just on the ground, right there beside the bowl. But you could tell the bowls had been moved apart. Like, yep. where, whereas they are probably like three inches apart when you place them, now you had two bowls that were, I don't know, at least a foot apart. They, they had definitely been moved. Um, there was, in the other bowl, I think there were like a couple of Cheetos and one little Ritz cracker that had been taken out of there, but no, the cinnamon roll was left behind. Mm -hmm. and, and that bowl was largely untouched. And we had our carton of eggs out there. And the, tonight, it was, I mean, that night, it was very unusual because one of the eggs had a little crack pushed down at the very top of it. It's almost like somebody pushed down to see if the egg were hard and it cracked on them. So it wasn't quite open, but it was cracked in, on the very, very top edge, but just one. And all the leg, all of the eggs remained in their holes in the carton. So That was pretty cool. Were there any um, fingerprints on the bowl that had been moved? Yes. There, yeah. there were definitely discernible finger, fingerprints on several parts of that bowl. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. And you're sure they weren't deer hooves or squirrel well, they would have I'm had sorry. to have been awfully tiny deer hooves. <laughs> I mean, no, they were round like 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 a fingerprint yeah. would be. A typical yeah. fingerprint would be. Yeah, okay. So we get back to camp and you um, sit down on your cot and what did you notice? Well, um, I was sitting on the edge of my cot, which was positioned right alongside Matt's truck. We sort of sleep up against the side, one side of the truck. Well, I looked down on the chrome step up. The floorboard. Floorboard uh, yeah. of this truck. F-150, go forward. Okay. And there are tiny little fingerprints, kind of backwards fingerprints, <laughs> on this floorboard. And I'm like... Like it did what? What do you think? What did it make it look like it did? This is hard. It's hard to talk about. <laughs> but uh -huh. It appeared that something crawled under the truck uh -huh. and stuck its little hand up and around that floorboard and left mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. fingerprints. Right. And I looked at that and started doing the mental math about the direction they were pointed and mm -hmm. thought, oh goodness, <laughs> something must have been underneath there, right beside my bunk. Mm -hmm. and, and we put you next to the truck to protect you and keep you away from anything, right? Yes, we did. So they came under the truck, the kids did. That's funny. Um, yeah, that that is, I'm still not ready to process that. Yes. And so I, I looked around and um, there was a point in the night where, when I woke up mm -hmm. early after going to sleep and I, I woke up mad and I, I said, is that you snoring? And it, he, he wouldn't know if he was snoring because he was asleep. Right. But something woke me up and mm -hmm. now after seeing those prints, I wondered if perhaps what woke me up was something on the underside of that truck or, mm -hmm. or near my cot. Right. Um, I didn't feel like something touched me or disturbed me, right. but... What else do you find near your cot besides those prints on the floorboard of the I, truck? I found a tiny footprint near my cot. Two, two tiny footprints, yes. It, yeah, one at a time. They, we yeah. didn't, I didn't notice them all together, but there is this tiny little footprint that must have been five inches long. Mm -hmm. it's, I have short feet, and, but it, and it was smaller than my size five and a half girl's shoe. Mm -hmm. um, as clear as can be, just... Just oh, as tiny. clear clear as could be. Mm -hmm. And um, that was startling. It's almost like someone stood at the head of my bed. While you were sleeping. While I was sleeping. Mm -hmm. And maybe took stock of me. I'm sure I was snoring. I have a cold. And I'm just getting over my cold. And so I, I wake myself up snoring. It's very mm -hmm. sad. 
but nonetheless, um, some things stood mm -hmm. outside of my cot that last night. And so, yeah, um, that was interesting. And then one other cool thing that you found in base camp that it, I had been missing for two, three weeks was what? So I started walking, after I saw the prints, I started walking around camp just to see if there's anything else that might stand out. And I looked over and maybe, maybe about six feet from where our cots were, lying on the ground was a, um, like a, like a tom-tom. Drumstick. Drumstick. Mm -hmm. um, round at the top and long, made out of a branch that mm -hmm. they had used previously to beat on a little drum up there and to make noise. Mm -hmm. Well... Um, I walked over to it and picked it up and turned to Dr. J and I said, did you leave this here last night? And he said, no, it's been missing several trips ago. So whoever, like the mallet, decided that it wasn't their property and that they were going to bring it back and give it back to him. And so it was laid gingerly, I guess, um, in the middle of our camp overnight. Yeah. Yeah, they took that when I was on a solo trip. I left the drum and the drumstick on that white table at the head of the camp by the 12 o'clock trailhead. And it was gone the next morning. And then there it was. And I could see like Chatty Kathy telling her little, you know, toddler sibling, you're going to take that drumstick back and give it to Matt. And it was amazing. I just, when you handed that to me, it was I, like, I wow. Think, I think what what's amazing is that someone decided that this wasn't theirs yeah and yes. brought it back yeah and just left it there quietly left yeah. it there in the middle of the night yep. um that implies ethics it it does imply ethics and it, it 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 implies that some someone is aware that this is yours mm -hmm. and that it b definitely came from you and that they know it came from you and that they think well maybe you would like to have it back and mm -hmm. so that was incredibly wild to find this morning um, mm -hmm. incredibly wild okay so um your first trip to soa has come to an end you're about ready to go back home you have lots to think about and i'm sure when you're on the plane flying back home you'll probably say oh i wish i would have said this or i wish i would have said that but you know here we are and you get to say what you want to say now, whether you remember to say something or not. How would you sur summarize your, your trip to Soa? The good, the bad, and the ugly. My trip to Soa was yeah. maybe the, one of the most brave things that I have personally done. And so I feel good about going up there and, and staying. That was definitely outside of my comfort zone. But mm -hmm. I would just say this. All of the questions that I have about Sasquatch or forest people, um, you know, being real, um, have been made pretty clear to me. I know that there are living sentient beings in that forest, and they are there, and um, they are larger than you can imagine, <laughs> and um, that they are emotionally present, I would say. They are peaceful. They are really curious, and um, they are a group of people who live together. I mean, i d deeply aware that these are people who know one another, who probably talk to one another. I mean, it's more than just some creature out there. This is, it has to be something else. You know, I can't I can't describe it for you on video, except you're you're very aware that you have a being in your presence. It's not like it, you're going to the zoo to me, not at all. You know, I mean, it's it's something deeper than that, and you almost feel a strange reverence. That that's that's what I felt. That what's there has, maybe has wisdom. I guess um, I'm I'm shaken up and scared, and um, just really. Excited to know for myself in my heart um, that that this is this, that there's something very real that lives there. That's 100% sure. I believe that now. You know, 
I've, I've watched videos and I've done tons of reading and I've met some of you really amazing people out there who do so much field work and you know I have great respect for you but you know um, I always want when I judge things I'd like to judge them on the merits of what I've seen and what I know and so I've had a lot of questions answered for myself up here and um, I'm still scared <laughs> and I'm still excited at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'll have to think about this. I'm really tired too. Yeah. Um, yep. It's hard to sleep in that environment, um, but it's amazingly beautiful. Soa is beautiful and um, the forest people have a, an amazing home. You know, um, when you get up in these areas and you know, you process what people have said in the past about, well, um, how come we never find a body? Or how come, you know, we never, um, most people never ever see these creatures. Um, I, now I understand why that would be. Um, I think that they are masters of, I don't know, not, not deception, but detection. They, they are quiet, they are stealthy, they are the masters of that forest and know every inch of it and can crawl around it and can walk around it without you knowing that they are there. And, um, you know, if you would just see the terrain and the, the sheer area, I mean, it's definitely clear why nobody's pulling a, a Sasquatch body out of the forest. I mean, not, not even feasible, but I mean, I do, I do feel more like that these are people. They're not just, just screaming creatures. They are people. Not dumb giant mountain apes. No, that's not, that's not it. That's yeah. not it. You're aware that that's not it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now some silly questions as we wrap things up for purposes of clarification. Did we consume alcohol while we were in SOA? Not a drop of alcohol. No, we did. We didn't violate that policy. Did we use any narcotics while we were in SOA? No, we did not. Not did, to even use hair color. Did Dr. Johnson demonstrate any signs of psychosis while in SOA? No, he did not. Dr. Johnson spent a lot of time acting as, as, as counselor to my fears, but no, no psychosis. This is all very real. Okay. Did I hypnotize you while you were in SOA? No, he did not. Did I hoax you in any way while you were in SOA? You did not hoax me, and it would be impossible for you to hoax me up there, given the landscape. Okay. And last but not least, how does the Kool-Aid taste? Well, it's delicious. and um, You're I'll, loving that SOA Kool-Aid? You know I am, and I think <laughs> that this only deepens my interest and desire to learn and find out more. You know, I'm, now I'm more curious than ever about this and you know it will keep me devoted for a really long time that's for sure I'm yep. glad I did this good coming back to SOA I hope to awesome good deal thank you Miss Andrea Billups you did an awesome job for your first time camping in so long and in a hot spot where the forest people were and I um, loved having you along loved getting to know you better um, I value our friendship and I'm looking forward to having you return. Cynthia and I value our friendship with you. And thanks for being a wonderful admin, by the way, for the TSUSA Facebook group. I appreciate sure. that too. Well, next time I'm going to bring a pink sleeping bag. <laughs> <laughs> pink sleeping bag. Okay. We're signing off. Thank you. Bye-bye.